Grenada's Prime Minister denies receiving election campaign funding from a failed citizenship by investment project. And in sports, spinner or spin bowler Rakim Cornwall leads West Indies to control on the opening day of the one-off test against Afghanistan. I'm Ricardo Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Wednesday, November 27th, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My wife has given me permission to speak tonight. You know, some 50 years ago, a small group of visionary students on the campus of Howard University, in their low to mid-twenties, saw a need not only for the students to connect among themselves on the campus, Grenada's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Mitchell has denied that his new national party, the NNP, received campaign financing from a failed citizenship by investment project. His denial comes on the heels of a documentary aired on international news network Al Jazeera earlier this week that alleged several Caribbean countries with CBI programs are also selling diplomatic passports to people who make significant financial contributions to political parties. The program named Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines among countries that have benefited from the sale of diplomatic passports. But Prime Minister Mitchell said that the allegation that the governing NNP received funds from NNP, or sorry, from Grenada Sustainable Aquaculture, the GSA, are false. Now last year, Grenada's Citizenship by Investment Committee announced a suspension of applications for the GSA until further notice. And earlier this year, Mitchell told reporters the company did not make the investments agreed to and his government was investigating the proprietors as they have collected significant sums of money. He also stated at the time that the company's actions resulted in the government making changes to the way funds are accessed for CBI developers and projects. Antigua's police commissioner, Wendell Robinson, has been dismissed with immediate effect after being on suspension for more than a year. Chairman of the Police Service Commission, Kelvin John, informed Robinson of the development in a November 25th letter in which he said the decision was taken in the public interest. John said Robinson does not have the suitable temperament for the uh, post and his ability to perform his duties has been compromised by his strained relationship with Public Safety, Safety Minister Stedroy Benjamin. Robinson was suspended in April last year after pol a male police or male police officers accused him of sexual harassment. Atlee Rodney has been acting as commissioner. An investigation is underway into the alleged misappropriation of $375,000 from the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard, but National Security Minister Stuart Young has sought to assure it is not taxpayer funds that have gone missing. He made the disclosure in response to a question on the matter during yesterday's Senate sitting. Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard wishes to advise that these monies do not involve any public funds. They were contributions from the men and women in the Coast Guard. However, the organization categorically denounces any type of fraudulent activity involving its members, and as such, the relevant authorities have been notified. Internal investigations have been ongoing, and if any such activities are proven, the Trinidad and Tobago Coast Guard stands prepared to take all available disciplinary action. The matter of the missing funds is the subject of not only an international investigation, but is now under a police probe. 
The French government has urged its nationals to postpone any trips to Haiti until further notice after a couple was shot and killed in front of their hotel soon after arriving to adopt two children. Seeing that the whole of the Haitian territory is to be avoided, France's Ministry of Foreign Affairs said citizens should only visit the CARICOM nation if it was absolutely necessary. Now on Sunday, two French citizens were shot dead in Port-au-Prince where they had just arrived after completing an adoption procedure. Uh, they, were on, they were on their first visit to Haiti and had traveled to meet the two children, a brother and his sister, as part of the two-week socialization visit. They were due to leave with the children at the end of the visit. Police are working on the theory that the couple may have been the targets of robbers who have tracked them from the Toussaint Louverture International Airport. And stay with us, your Midnight Sport is next. West Indies spin bowler Rakim Cornwall wreaked havoc on the opening day of the one-off test match against Afghanistan at the Etna Crick Cricket Stadium today. Now playing just his second test and his first outside of the region, the 26-year-old tore into the host's batting lineup to capture a remarkable 7 for 75 of 23 or 25.3 overs as the home side bowled out for 187. Afghanistan's innings took a nosedive as they slipped from 90 for 2 to 98 for 6 in the space of 6 overs with Cornwall taking all 4 wickets. It was his 17th first class 5 wicket haul and first in tests and also the first by a West Indies spinner since January. Now Cornwall ended with the best figures by a West Indies Indian bowler uh, in India since Andy Robertson's 7 for 64 against India back in 1975. Uh, Cornwall also held a low diving catch at first slip of captain Jason Holder who chipped in with two for 22 after the West Indies won the toss and upted to bat first. And with that innings ended, West Indies uh, started to bat and they have closed today on 68 for the loss of two wickets. Switching sports, Guyana picked up silver and bronze medals at the college's athletics conference in Alberta, Canada recently. The details in this report. Over the weekend in Alberta, Canada, the Guyanese top seeded players showcased their talent and skills needed to bring home a silver and a bronze medal. Nairani Ramdani, playing for the King's University Eagles, won the second place in the men's singles and fifth place in the mixed doubles, while his sisters Priyani Ramdani, playing for the old college Broncos, won the third place in the women's single and seventh place in the mixed doubles. Nairani, who finished second in the singles, showed what it takes to become one of the best badminton players. In the quarterfinals, he defeated John Lee in straight sets, 21-13, 21-17. And that's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.